Hello everybody and welcome into Grimdark Survivors, which is a bullet heaven game which promises to have a lot of uh, game breaking builds, uh, kind of an interesting theme. Uh, there are a prodigious amount of characters for you to select from and weapons and everything. We're going to get into all that in a little bit. We're going to go through and do some analysis of this, uh, both from a gameplay perspective and a UI perspective. Uh, while we play through this, it's going to be a good time. I'm, I, I've got some high hopes for this one. Uh, starting off your big UI overload, right? So we had our first level, now we're in our upgrade screen. Uh, so that's creating a bit of a separation, right? So we have the levels, which are high energy, high intensity. If we describe it as a dramatic arc, it is coming up. And then we get into this screen and it slams down, right? We are forced out of our lizard reactionary um, action brain. And now we are getting thrown into the cold brain, the frontal lobes, where we are looking at numbers, numbers, and more numbers. Look at all these numbers. Wowzies, this is a lot of numbers. Um, we have our, our character in a nice little idle animation. Uh, very simple, just bobbing up and down on the torso. Pretty simple, anyone can, can do that. Note to you game developers, do that. Breathe some more life into your world. It uh, looks like we've got a bunch of different weapons here. This is a demo, by the way, so I don't know that we've got necessarily what's going to be in the final release as far as the UI goes, but we're going to look at it as, as far as we have it here. We have 18 cogs, which seems to be our currency. Uh, shop wave 2 currency and then a reroll. And then I'm guessing these are different weapon options. Now, there are some problems here, obviously, right? This is probably a bug where there's just no name on the sword happens it's fine um and then we have power fist one dot 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 too long we need to shrink the text down if it's gonna or, or find another way to rephrase this rename it fist or something or p fist or something uh so that uh you know we can actually understand this this is power fist one tier power fist one tier i don't know i mean they seem to have the same numbers associated with them I don't really know um, what that means, though. Um, why are we getting two different options here? Uh, we also have Tonic, which will lower our hit points and increase our damage. So, okay, let's break this UI down a little bit more. We have all of these numbers with icons, right? That's good. We get to see exact numbers on what we're doing. So that's going to skew your game from the beginner side of that bell curve, right? Of people that are just barely getting started, it's going to shift it over to the more advanced sides. This screen promises to the player, we are gonna reward you for diving very deep into these systems, right? So let's see if the gameplay really matches that. Uh, we have common something, damage, physical, plus one, and crit chance. So um, a note on this, we have iconography, which is good. And then you can hover over the icon in order to get this little uh, progressive disclosure window to pop out, and that's good. I wish that pop-out would happen whenever I moused over the entire entry, right? Because right now it's only on the icon. I would love it to be the entire field here would give me that pop-over. Um, just to make it easier, right? We're talking Hicks Law in terms of... Wait, no, not Hicks Law. Fitz Law, I always mix the two up. Fitz Law, talking about how hard it is to um, mouse over things based on the size of the target and the distance. So right now, distance isn't all that much but size is really small. And so that is just a little micro moment that could be eased by making this whole thing uh, a hover target, right? Um, we can also get all of this information by mousing over the icon of the upgrade that we're looking at. So we get damage, attack speed, crit chance, and crit damage. Now the problem I have with this though, I'm gonna take a screenshot of this. We're gonna take this into Figma real quick. We're already jumping into some UI analysis. <laughs> Wasting no time on this. Um, let's check this out. If I can fix uh, fix this here. There we go. So we've got our icons here and then explanations over here. Why are the icons not repeated? Right? So like if we uh, change this, we'll mask this out. Then we're going to Drag our mask over, and then we'll obscure that. So we've got our damage over here, and then 
Let me grab another mask for this guy. There we go. And then control A, M. Now we have our icon. We can move this over. Oops. Let me grab the whole thing instead of just uh, an element of it. There we go. Right. Now we have icon next to name. Now I can freely associate and really quickly see, oh, that's damage. I can tie that back in. Back in. It's going to enhance learning, right? And this is a big deal, not just for allowing people to learn your, or, or allowing people to understand your game. It's really big for learning the game, and that's super crucial. R remember, we talked about that. As soon as we came into this page, we said all of these numbers are saying on the bell curve of player experience, all of these numbers are communicating to the player. This is going to reward you for investing your time, effort, and energy. We want you to get to the advanced tail end of that bell curve. We don't want you to stay in the beginning, which means your your educational parts of your game have to be airtight. They've got to be so good. And so adding that icon in there is going to help people learn and associate things faster so they don't have to hover over. They don't have to get this progressive disclosure. They're able to just automatically key in. Oh, that's what damage is. Right, right, right. I remember that's damage. That's attack speed. That's right. It's going to be so important to be tying those back to each other as much as you possibly can. So that would be a big increase. We have um, numbers down here. Can I, are these hotkeys? Can I press one to buy it? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Good. Um, I, I was going to hope that those were hotkeys. If they weren't hotkeys, I would say just get rid of them. They don't, they don't mean anything. Um, we have our stats uh, breakdown over here, which is good. Um, it is a little strange. We have some that are larger than others. See that? Like this is the side on the left is like one and a quarter, one and a fifth of the other ones. So this tells me these are the primary statistics and these are the secondary statistics because we have size indicating relationship, right? Uh, this is luck. Okay. Stock rarity and shop. I'm glad that that actually describes what luck does. There's so many games where luck is like, I don't know. It does a lot of things. We wanted to affect a lot of stuff and didn't know how to describe it. <laughs> Um, AOE range. Wow, that's specific. Okay, specifically AOE range. Not projectile size, AOE range. Duration, cooldown reduction, mystical damage, physical damage. Um, and then we have attack speed range, damage. So, yeah, I mean, these do feel kind of like the primary things and then the secondary things. So, I think they've actually got a decent hierarchy here. One awkward thing, though, I will say is this space in between here is different from this space. So if, if we uh, head back to uh, Figma, let's take a look at this. Um, we've got this whole column of space here, right? Let me make sure this is pixel perfect. One over, okay, and that's looking good. And then we're going to make this a different color. And then we have this amount of gutter space over here. I'm counting that, counting that as a border. I don't know if it's a border or not, I'm gonna say it is. So this is a different width, right? Usually when you're looking at spacings, you wanna try and keep things as consistent as possible because what this, hap what this does now is it creates this relationship of the things on the left are, they feel more separated from the things on the right because they have a bigger space between them than there is between each of them and uh, the side, uh, uh, excuse me, the side uh, barriers of their parent container. So if we take this and put it up here, for example, I think we're going to maybe get a different... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. This is one pixel bigger. And you may say, oh, it's one pixel. It doesn't matter. But it does. Uh, people will subconsciously pick up on this. This is why design matters. And then if we put this down, I'm assuming we're going to have the same amount of space as that top. Yeah, that's fitting in pretty well. Okay. So there you go. We have three different spacings in there. This could be tightened up a lot visually if we just homogenize all of those spaces and that would communicate all of these things have the same relationship to each other. You have the size indicating that primary and secondary, but then there's no like special differences between them. They are just different displays. In fact, you could even explore making this into two separate columns. So instead of having it uh, in two columns within the same parent container, have two parent containers, right? Uh, if we uh, do this and 
set that background color. Then we can drag these over. And then you can even play with things a little bit more, right? You can say, hey, this is, uh, this is your primary stat, and then this is your secondary. Now we have an even clearer visual hierarchy, right? So there are some ways to explore with that to kind of enhance that dynamic a little bit, in my opinion. Uh, once again, this is all about getting people learning as fast as we possibly can to drive them into that late game bell curve where they really understand what's going on because that, that is what the game is saying. Hey, this is what we want people to do. Okay, we have storage. We have our power fist in storage and in our equipment. Do I have two power fists? Is this a gotcha style thing? Can I combine? <gasps> I can combine. Okay, so my first thought was like, this is weird. I just bought an upgrade to my power fist. Is this another power fist? It, that would be really weird to me. I'm glad it's, I'm glad it is another power fist. I did not know there were like com combination style mechanics in this. So we're gonna go ahead and combine. Um, and I had to go exploring on that, by the way. It would be nice to have some sort of, um, all right, fine. We're gonna go back to our, <laughs> we're gonna get to the game eventually. Um, let me, uh, let me uh, grab this real quick. Uh, it would be great when buying it, if there would be some sort of indicator here to say, hey, look, this is special. You can do something to it now. Like if we add um, an inner shadow and uh, kind of glow it up, right? Uh, and then remove the fill and then up the spread. Oh, where's my inner shadow? Come on. Shoot. Well, I think you get the idea, right? Um, well, hold on. There's there's more than one way to skin a cat here. We'll, we'll do a gradient, radial, and uh, so you are going to be zero percent, and then you. There we go. Right. Just give me some sort of signifier, and that's what this is called. It's called a signifier. It's saying, hey, there's something you can do over here, right? When you mouse over this, and obviously this is super ugly, right? Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do it this way. But uh, the idea is uh, you, you showcase, look, there's something unique and special about this now. Go interact with it. And then when you hover over it, right? Then you have the button similarly glowing, right? Saying, look, you can combine things now. Lead the player, guide them, get them in the game. Yeah, we're gonna combine. Look, we have combined. We now have a Power Fist Tier 2. I don't really know what that did. It would be great as well to have some sort of transition screen that would really amp up the juice, make this feel good, because like we talked about, we have like our our um, lizard brain reactionary instinctual part when we're in the, the level. And now we're in here, we're in the frontal lobes. We don't wanna disassociate entirely those two things. We wanna keep them interlinked and keep shoving people back into that lizard brain because that's the emotional appeal that's going to keep people playing our game, right? It's the same basic thing with pitching. Like if you ever want to go pitch something to a business, you don't want them thinking with their frontal cortex. You want them thinking with their lizard brain in the back because emotionally, we all make decisions emotionally first and then we justify them with logic. So keep people emotionally driven here. You know how to do this. You, we, we saw this in the levels. Just bring that same uh, level of polish and everything over to here. Give me a big like splash, ooh, upgraded, ching, 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 numbers go up, wow. And then I get to actually see what the impact was because I don't know how big of a difference it made to upgrade it. Okay, finally, we can heal for um, crystals, which I guess we don't have, we have items. Once again, we got some tabs, some progressive disclosure. Um, notice how they look like buttons over here. Signifiers, 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 signifiers. We have the same button style all over the place, I think. No, this is a different button style. This is a different button style than this one is. See how this one has this gradient up here, this change in color? This one does not. These are different button styles. That is interesting. And then this one seems to be the same as this up top, And but then the tabs, are different. wow, weird, interesting. And this is the same. So almost predominantly all of these, but then we have the tabs being a different style. That's interesting. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. Like if you're gonna have a primary, buck, secondary, tertiary button style, that's totally fine, but make sure you stay consistent in how you apply them, right? Primary button should be like the thing you want your players to do. So like 
buying possibly or going to wave two, right? And then secondary actions should probably be like reroll and heal. And then tertiary should be your storage and your items, right? Um, little, uh, little thought there. Also, man, we're never going to get to actually play the game. What is the typography here? Hold on. I need to know. Is this the same font, uh, size for different, um, I, oops, I need to know. I need to know. Are these headers different sizes? Because if so, that's another area that I could get tuned up. Okay. So this is about, what, 40? I know it's not the right font, but that's fine. We're not really caring about the font. We're just caring about size. It does seem bigger, right? Like our S is going up and over. Uh, is it doing the same thing over here? It is. Okay. Okay. It just looked different. And then what about this button style? Yeah, so the button text is a lot bigger. Oh, that's really weird. Okay, that's that's quite strange, uh, typographically speaking. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five. I don't think this is the same as the stats in the shop. Um at least five different typography um, styles. Ideally, you want to keep it to like three at most, right? Uh, you can you can do two, um, but like it, it starts getting risky, right? Um, so if we bring these back to our opacity, shop, wave two, and then we have re uh, is. Okay, for some reason I thought the R there was uh, was capsed. Um, Reroll, uh, and then we have our our names. We're gonna we're not gonna do everything on here. I just kind of want to um, show how this might be able to look if we had a little bit more consistent um, typography. So uh, we're gonna throw a block here throw our stats up there, and then we're gonna change um, this to a, a, a good bit font. Um, I think there's like a player one font. No, is that just in <laughs> Google fonts or something? Uh, let's go with passion one. That's close enough. It's not It's not the best, and I, I there's another one that's on the tip of my tongue that I'm pretty sure is built in here, and I just cannot remember it right now. That's fine though. Um, actually, before we do that, let's, change the color of that. So I want to show like you don't even necessarily need to change a whole lot. Just just sizing will completely change the way this all uh, feels in terms of feeling like a cohesive package. So we've got shop wave two. We're going to middle line all these and bring it down so it's centered in the button. Um, drag this out. There we go. Bring tonic up front, okay, and then we've got our button here. And we're not, like I said, we're not going to do everything. We're just going to do these mu th this many, and this is by fourteen, okay. So let's start playing around with this. Let's change our like headers to be like way chunkier, right? Once again, guiding people in to where we want their eyes to be. We're gonna bring this black down to a bold, and then maybe even increase the size. Do we even want bold? Maybe we just go regular. And then stick at 48. Now, we have this information hierarchy, right? Oh, let's do this one too, because that, that's gonna be kind of important for communicating that idea of hierarchy. Level one. And also, was that all capsed? Yes, it was. So we can just text transform, all caps. Okay, there we go. So let me uh, <laughs> extend this down so it's not quite so annoying there. Um, grab our yellow color that that had shared. So you can see we have a much clearer hierarchy now here, even without finishing this up, right? Even just changing it a little bit is going to completely change the feel. Um, 
let's take this down to 40. Let's let's have it be the same button style as down here, right? So now we have two different typography styles that are now very clearly communi communicating hierarchy. Up here, this shop wave two, everything starts to get kind of lost, right? Um, level one, shop, stats, these are all different sections. They should all have the same weight, theoretically, right? Now, maybe the designers would disagree with that, but in my opinion, uh, as a product designer of over 10 years, these are your sections. They should have the same weight unless you want to drive someone in a specific place, right? You're kind of driving people to the shop because of space. It's got so much size apportioned to it. Maybe you want to make that even bigger, in which case we can talk about different layouts and making the paper doll inventory even more subordinate, right? There's a lot of ways to explore, but you can see how just some, some quick typographic shifts to make things a little more consistent, communicate that visual hierarchy, can make a big change in how the game is experienced. Okay, let's actually play the dang game. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Uh, and this is uh, all of our controls. It is... Oh, we do have aiming on some weapons, apparently. Okay. Uh, we have a pretty fast attack speed on this thing, especially for the beginning weapon of a bullet heaven. I do not expect to feel as in charge as I do here. Is this a uh, supply crate or something? Don't really know what that was. Cool enemy designs, by the way. Kind of reminds me of the board game Shadows Over Brimstone, if you're familiar with that, with the chest cavity mouth guys blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh we get new weapons lovely see now we have level up too. see this now feels more cohesive my and my attention is being drawn here a lot more clearly so i don't have to buy new weapons that's cool i just get them i like that that feels very empowering to me as a player um so we go blue saber throw a blade not where i thought that was gonna go uh, and it's mystic damage. What do we have here? Physical damage. So we probably want to go physical. Oh, but they're all mystic. Ooh, interesting. Throw a steel knife. Uh, that's like just the sprite from Vampire Survivors. <laughs> I'm sure it's I'm sure it's its own thing. But clearly, it's gotten some inspiration. Blue shuriken. Throw nine blue shurikens every one second. Um, let's go for blue shuriken because this seems to be more AOE, and our fist seems to be more single target. So we'll kind of try and get these squared away. Also, I saw, there we go, yeah, okay, this is interesting. So you can hover over the, the weapon icon, and you can hover over the slot icon. And that will have different things. It kind of reminds me of a bio prototype too, where different slots only accommodate different things. Um, okay, right, you can sell your slots? What? <laughs> okay, let's go with the shuriken. We, we won't go to, to wackadoodle. Ah, uh, we only have one slot. Can I buy more slots? Ooh, how do I get more slots? Interesting. Uh, oh, we have another level up. Okay. Uh, cooldown reduction, crit damage, crit chance, and AoE. Um, let's go cooldown reduction. Now can I buy more slots? Can I equip this? No. Jiminy. We can buy a chainsaw. We can buy another... Um, man. Um, what is this? Dodge, luck, and experience multiplier minus 40%? That is a... Big cut to experience multiplier. Holy cannoli. I mean, luck plus 20. I guess I don't know how much 20 luck really is. We start with zero, so we don't have, like, a frame of reference for magnitude, right? We talk about that a good amount of is 10 damage a lot or not a lot? And I can kind of adjust that based on my starting weapon. I have uh, 15 damage, so 10 is, like, a decent chunk, right? 20 luck, I don't have any frame of reference for how much 20 is. So I, this is kind of just going to go by the wayside until I can figure that out. Let's start buying an extra power fist. Um, oh, we got to shoot. Let's sell our shurikens, I guess. Oh, that's going to give us experience. It's not going to give us gears. Lame. Okay. We're going to lock power fist too. Then we're going to combine. Oh, I can't click and drag. Oh, that's lame. I want to click and drag combine. Okay, so now we have a blue power fist, tier 3, damage 25, attack speed of 0.73, so it's slightly faster. The tier 2 is 0.76. That was a big damage jump up, though. From 1 to 2 was 10 to 15, and then from 2 to 3 was 15 to 25. So we went up by 5 and then went up by 10. That's a big, big jump. Okay, let's jump in here. Let's go punch some demon alien monsters in the face. Yeah, attack speed feels really fast. What are these? Nothing? Just gravestones? with. So that's an interesting thing, right? Like, I, I thought maybe that was going to be something I could interact with. Ooh, first time. I don't know what that achievement is. 
Um, I will say good, uh, good signifiers on the, uh, or not even signifiers, but good visual design on the experience drops. That uh, that bright green is really contrasting against the uh, the background, which was also green. So that could have gone a little sour. It could have been hard to pick that up. I think they did a good job. Definitely clearly shows, hey, go. In it's inviting the player in, right? Come, come check this out. Uh, let's go more cooldown reduction. Okay, buy these two, combine them, and then buy you, combine, and combine. Ooh, we got a visual art upgrade. Good, I love that. I love it, love it, love it. So we went up by 10 damage. Attack speed went down by 0 0.05, which is a pretty big jump. Um, our crit chance and crit damage are the same, uh, but very cool. Right on. We're going to re-roll, see if there's anything here I kind of want to look for. Uh, I don't think we really want any of that, so we're not going to lock any of it. Slots filled one out of one. How do we get more slots? This is brutal. How do we get more slots? Love the, the Thunderclaw, though. I mean, I'm definitely feeling very um, copyright strikey against uh, Games Workshop and Warhammer here. <laughs> Which, you know, is 100% their intention. Oh, that was an Elite. Okay. So now we're starting to get a little bit more advanced mechanics getting brought in through these. I mean, this is um, very clearly a Brotato um, continuation, right? I'm not going to say clone. I don't like the idea of saying clones unless it's literally just a clone. This is not a clone. This is, they're, they're clearly putting their own stuff in on this. But it's very clearly meaning to um, pick up some of that Brotato experience. Um, so we have a 5% AoE and a 10% AoE. Oh, but it's common versus uncommon. Some color in that label of common versus uncommon, and even in the graphic, would be nice. I guess there maybe is. I think this is supposed to be green, in which case uncommon should also be green. And this is white, common should be gray. I mean, blue is kind of close to gray. It's a steel blue, you know, it's it's kind of close. But I would definitely want uncommon to be green and I want that outline to be a little more apparent, maybe have the green up in the name, just to really uh, zero, the, especially if we're gonna have hotkeys here, of people, you know, the idea is you're gonna be just jamming that hockey as soon as you come in. Give me, a much clearer visual understanding of what is more rare or not. I don't think that's unfair. HP regen down, but armor goes up. But I mean, like, we only have one slot. Like, feels a little silly to even think about doing any of that. Um, all right, let's get our luck up by 20. Armor and dodge, don't really care about that. Rifle mag, attack speed up and damage physical. Yes, locking that in 100%. Skull drone. <laughs> Legally distinct from a servitor. Okay. Sorry, I'm messing with my hair a whole lot. Oh no! My HP regen went down so low that I'm poisoning myself. Well, that's not gonna work out. <laughs> Shoot. Okay. Once again, you are providing a lot of freedom to your players, which is awesome. That is skewing this way far over to advanced. You should have some sort of signifier to say this is dangerous, right? Like, if you're going into negative HP regen, I want more than red text. To me, I just thought that meant, oh, like, I'm just not going to regen HP. That's fine. I can just rely on health pickups or staying alive to the end of the wave. I didn't know I was going to poison myself. <laughs> I'm probably not going to make that mistake again, but that is such a critical error to make that, like, this really needs to be highlighted even more. Like, have a red... Uh, inside shadow or something, something to call more attention to this because um, that's brutal. Okay, uh, we have our different button styles here once again. We've got this like yellow text, which is like yellow snow, really weird. It's also interesting that they start you in the details. No, this is the details. This feels like the details screen. This feels like the normal screen. I would definitely swap these. Also, I don't know why we have that yellow text. Um, yeah, not a fan, personally. It's just, it's low contrast, and it looks muddy. Um, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six different, seven, eight different typography colors here. Narrow it down. Bring it down to just a few, right? High score, total damage, those can share a color. Receive platinum does not, should not be the same as the color on the buttons. 
details can share the same color as the buttons uh, or, or be white, right? That can just be white. Um, there's, there's ways to simplify this down. Okay, so we've got our achievements. Um, they're all the same icon. I'm assuming that's a demo thing that full release would have more complete stuff. Bronze minus one. I don't know what that means. Or is it bronze dash one? Are these like tiers and levels? Survive for a minute to feature first elite. Okay. Right on. So, we've got our main menu. It's fine. It's serviceable. Typographic logo with that gradient and everything. I don't know. It feels like it's missing something, right? Like, some sort of element getting brought in. Like, maybe the gun coming in underneath Grimdark or something. Or, or under Survivors. Or have, like, a, a bug alien face integrated. Something. Like, some sort of embellishment to bring that forward a little bit. Um, perfectly fine menu. We have the, the big action up here. Kind of drawing you in to the eyes. And then we kind of see achievements when we scale up. So it's not necessarily the most efficient um, layout or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, composition. It's not the most efficient composition, but it works, right? Your eyes start in the upper left. They scroll down, hit the achievements and come up and we're, we're at play. Is it the best thing? No. Is it great? Not really. Um, the padlock icon is also misaligned with Arsenal. They look to be both top aligned. They should both be center aligned to communicate that relationship more clearly. Um, and then we have the, the hover state, which is fine. I do want to talk about hover states real quick. So we're going into making a new character here. We have our meta progression. It's weird also that it's white on a gray back. Like that just feels so unspecial, you know? Um, so we also have all of these buttons. They have the same hierarchy. All of these buttons feel equally important, except for like these two feel most important because they are, um, larger, right? But these two feel equally important, and they all have the same typographic treatment. And so there's not a real sense of direction here. Let's bring this into Figma, and let's play around with it a little bit. Head back to our browser. How long have we been going for? 32 minutes? Okay, we're cruising through this. We're doing okay. So, uh, once again, if we shifted all this, you know, I'm going to kind of do something a little bit naughty here and uh just kind of cover that all up <laughs> we'll, we'll go ahead and, and try and make it look like it somewhat belongs but uh really what i would say is don't necessarily make your own uh bar down here although you could it wouldn't have been my first thing though uh, my first idea was just we're going to change the buttons up but um, I want this to, I, I, I can't remove the buttons and just leave the artwork, which is what I was going to do originally. So, um, let's grab our buttons over here. Let me grab my masks. We're going to mask you. Oops. Right. Got to send it to the back mask. There we go. We're going to tighten this in a little bit. So it just is a little less distracting. There we go. Okay. We have play. This is our primary call to action, right? We want this to be the button. Now, we also want the ability to change your character and to change your weapon. And we could do this somewhat simply, right? If we, um, I'm gonna uh, bring the original over here so we can compare and co contrast. We have choose hero, choose weapon. They're both gonna affect these things, right? So, uh, we could have A very simple, uh, we don't even need um, choose, right? We can just say character or hero. We don't, we don't need the word choose. It's implied. I think people are going to understand exactly what it is that we're looking for. Um, and we're going to bring the size down. Okay. And we're going to copy all this and say weapon. There we go. And then we have clothes we need to deal with. We're gonna bring this all the way off to the side. Mask that out, or not mask it out, but cover it up and say close. And then we're gonna say, uh, I mean, close isn't even necessarily something that makes sense here because you're not really closing, you're like going back, right? Um, 
So you could even like do an icon. We haven't seen any icons in the buttons yet, um, for better or worse. Um, but you know, have some sort of way to say this is not as important as hitting that play button, right? And this is a gross orientation. This is not what I would recommend. Uh, I think there are a lot of things we could do to tighten this up. So if we take all this, bring it down, and let's actually uh, put these guys, these buttons, in here. Right? And then we can put the back button up here. And now our play button can be this whole thing. I'm just going to put it in the middle because I don't have access to the like the, the original sprite, but um, can I? No. Mask. Ah, we're <laughs> losing it. We're losing it. Let me bring this up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Oh, dear. Bring it down. Bring it back down. <laughs> All right. Never mind. But you get the idea, right? This could be a full width button. Um, we could uh, do all that sort of stuff. We can have the hero and the weapon buttons integrated in here. Uh, we're a little off-centered here, which is strange. So, like, there's even opportunities to... Let me group this all together so we can move things around a little bit easier. Uh, group and group. We can move weapon and then hero, right? We can have a different relationship like that. We can uh, make one of these a little more subordinate. We're going to shrink this down because maybe we want people to be playing with heroes more often than we want people to be playing with uh, different weapons. Or, or maybe it's the vice versa, right? You can start to imply to the player how you're expecting the game to be played. Uh, another option to continue off of that is instead of having these two buttons, we can have modify or change, you know. Um... And then that's just one button, and you click on that, and then you get your different selections for the hero and for the weapon, right? Uh, and that just starts to clean everything up, once again, directing the player uh, towards where you actually want them to go a little more clearly. All right, let's jump back into the game. Um, hover states. We want to talk about hover states. Um, this orange clashes with nearly every single button text that is in this UI. Boy, do I hate this orange. It does not... I understand that it's a lower value and it's trying to make that blue text pop. And orange and blue are, are definitely, um, uh, what, what's the word? I mean, they're oppositional colors, right? They contrast well against each other. Uh, but this orange feels very muddy. And I know we're going for grimdark, right? That's fine. Look at Warhammer 40K. Look at the salamanders. Like, you can have bright, vibrant, clean looking colors in a grimdark setting. It just, it doesn't work. For me, once again, this is all my opinion as random guy on the internet. Uh, so we see we have a quite a large variety of characters, which are like really cool. Like I, when I opened this up on launching this, I was like, wow, rad. This is super cool. Look at all these different characters and they look so different. Like I'm super excited uh, to check these guys out. They feel because of their visual style being so different that they're going to play very different. Even though that's probably not gonna be the case, they're probably just gonna be stat bonuses and then like hitbox changes, but like it feels really cool. Um, wow, that's interesting. Increase damage, lower your HP every time you level, that's cute. Um, one thing I, I really wanted to talk about, we have this hover state here with the orange background, once again, that orange, and then we have this like weird, gross yellow color. Um, I can hover over this in a lot of different ways. Are you noticing this? I can hover over the card and it highlights the character. I can highlight the character and it gives me a text pop-up. I can hover over the button and it highlights both the character and the button, but no, no pop-up. Like, reduce all of those into one thing, right? Make this whole thing your hover object for the cleaner, for the, for the sprite, and then make it your button. We don't, we don't need three different hover states here. This is an artifact of programming. This is not uh, a, an intentional thing. I cannot imagine it's an intentional thing. This has to be just like the way the UI has been set up, it does this. So this is a way to clean it up and make it more um, presentable. Um, and also it's weird, like I can't click on the card. I can't click on the sprite. I have to click on the character. 
But when I'm hovering over the sprite, that's when I see the information about it, and that's when I want to click, right? Because that's when I'm seeing what this guy's actually going to do. Um... Dodge is capped at 90%. Dodge plus 30%, armor minus 100. Um, let's go, like, full tank here. Uh, let's go with Powerbot. We're just going to go Omega Tank. And once again, we have this full screen button, which is exactly what I was talking about on the previous screen. Um, I am curious if maybe you could even condense this to where selecting a character closes the window. And then you can have the close be like a, a cancel button or a back arrow up here in the upper left. That upper left is kind of traditionally the place, Jacob's Law, right? Uh, people spend more time on other experiences from your own. So match the other experiences on the things that don't matter. And this is one of those things that doesn't really matter, right? Um, putting the back arrow up there is, I feel something that's very clearly, like th this should be an accept button, if anything. Okay. So then, look at that tiny little power fist on him now. Now we can choose our weapon. Same story over here. Um, with the hovers and everything, it's just, it feels out of place. I don't know what this icon means. I'm guessing maybe like level one. I guess maybe we'll get meta progression to allow us to skip that eventually. Um, let's go with the saw. Sure. Uh, crit chance, right? Doesn't, doesn't our hero have increased crit? Plus luck. And that's shop rarity. Um, yeah, I mean, what's scarier than a giant robot with a chainsaw, right? Let's dive in. Let's do one run, and then we'll probably call this, uh, interesting loading screen with the Grimdark Studios logo instead of the, um, like, game logo. Or maybe it wasn't Grimdark Studios. Maybe it was Grimdark Survivors. It, it felt like it was Studios, though. <laughs> I was wondering how they do a chainsaw. So it just sticks around and then it has a reload. So you can really feel like you're mowing through things. That's interesting. Uh, I'll go ahead and combine. We're gonna, oh, we have five slots this time around. Okay. Also allowing the player to lock and not lock specific items is a lot of control to give to the player. It's a lot of, a lot of power but you're locked in. So yeah, you really do feel like you're cutting through. I think that's a really good design for a chainsaw, to be honest, in a Brotato game. Uh, it feels like you're having to make that big, long cut. Oh dear. And and you start really caring about positioning. I I actually really like it. I, I, I like that implementation of the chainsaw. I think that very much matches the concept, that mental model of how a chainsaw should work. These are all mystic damage. Um, we'll, we'll just go swords. And then I have five slots, right? Where can I put this? Excuse you. Where do I put this? Because I can take that off and then... No, I can't even equip it. I literally can't... Oh, put on general slot. Take off. Oh, slots filled zero out of five. So now I'm really confused about how this works. So I can equip different slots. I'm assuming these slots over time will start to have a bunch of different modifiers on them. Um, yeah, now I can equip the sword. Okay. Uh, so why do I have slots filled one out of five, but then have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven slots total? Because this is a general slot, and then we have slots filled. So there's some language that needs to be developed here, right? The empty spaces need to be called something different from the slot that you put in them. Like they need to be called sockets or something. Uh, something to differentiate these different conceptual entities. And then we also need, I, I'm still very curious why we have, I don't know, maybe, maybe you can position your slots in different sockets and maybe they'll have like positional modifiers. Maybe that's why I have more sockets than you have slots available. Um, kind of curious to see how that progresses. Um, we're going to sell that. We don't need it. Um, oh, there's another saw. Good. All right. Let's go. It, it doesn't feel as strong as the power gauntlet does. But it does feel good. Like, it's definitely satisfying, even though it doesn't feel particularly empowering, right? Like, this dude we one-shot last time. Like, he was just obliterated. 
and we are taking a lot more damage. And I don't know if that's because exclusively of our weapon, or if it's also because of the size of our character now. Questions that I'm having about the, the game's balance and everything. Uh, what is this? Range. Ooh, that sounds good. Oh, but it's only for ranged weapons? Yeah, this is not a ranged weapon. I think it doesn't tell me it's a ranged weapon or not. And that's a problem. I need to know, is this melee or is it range? Um, Cause we get physical damage called out and uh, that's versus magical, but we don't have melee versus range. And if you have ranged only apply to ranged weapons, I need to know if it's range. Cause yeah, it's a chainsaw. You can assume it's gonna be melee, but also it's like extending away from my character. Does that count as ranged? by increasing my range, am I going to get a further extension from it? Or is it just going to be completely unused and just wait for like a shotgun or something? I don't know. Let's go ahead and combine. Get another chainsaw. We have HP 13 out of 20. Okay, so this is interesting. We have this heal thing down here. For meta progression, we can heal. That's weird. Um, I really wanted to know how much health that I had. I wanted a health bar down here. This was very easy for me to miss. Um, I think we're going to call it here, folks. This has been uh, Grimdark Survivors. What a great time. Uh, I really like the game. I think there's a lot of interesting things about it, and it seems like the sort of game that if you dive in, you're going to be rewarded for it, right? Um, I have found this to be a really compelling UI analysis. Th big thank you to the uh, Hityara Games team that's making Grimdark Survivors. Um, this is not sponsored. They have not given me access to the demo or anything um but just thank you to them for building something putting it out there because that is a, a tremendous amount of effort so big thank you to them everything that i say as always our critiques are not meant in a spirit of i am better than them it is just in a spirit of these are things that i'm noticing and these are ways that i think that uh this can be elevated and like this whole screen honestly could get redone there's no visual focus we, we could yeah we don't have enough time to talk about it we don't have enough time to talk about it and that is grimdark survivors it felt like a logo to me okay Maybe because it's different from this, so it just seemed out of place. Anyways, that's going to be it for today. Uh, as a reminder, Fox Hollow Games is a charitable enterprise devoted to helping people enter the game industry. We have a Discord. We do daily, uh, week daily streams. We're hosting a game jam in July. Uh, we have all sorts of great things coming up. Make sure to like, follow, subscribe, uh, and we will catch you next time.